Hey everybody, this is Dale with Networking Step by Step, and welcome to the Service Provider OSPF video podcast. The podcasts are designed to give you, the network engineer, the exact information to implement and support different networking technologies. In addition, Networking Step by Step offer videos called Video Cheat Sheets, Configuration Guides, Copy and Paste Ready Configuration Examples, Solution Guides, Blogs, Surveys, and the list goes on and on all designed to help you get down to the meat of the subject quickly. So the next time your manager asks if you know a particular technology, you can say yes and still have a life. What can a service provider do to improve the, the performance of OSPF? Traditionally, service providers run one IGP. In this video podcast, it is OSPF. They also utilize only one instance of OSPF and they also run BGP. BGP is basically carrying the quote-unquote customer routes or external routes and the purpose of OSPF is to carry the route for the next hop to those customer routes. Here's a little networking by the numbers to show how each protocol, in this case OSPF and BGP, play its part in getting traffic from here to there. Let's assume the full internet table is around 300,000 routes. It may be a little more than that, it may be a little less than that, but let's pretend that 300,000 is the total number of internet routes that are available today. So if you take that number of routes, and let's take the largest OSPF network that I know about, which is from six to 7,000 routes. So if you take the total number of OSPF routes and the total number of BGP routes, then you will have approximately still 300,000 routes. I, I left it at 300,000 to keep the number simple. Let's say you want to find the percentage of your OSPF routes versus the number of BGP routes you have. So if you divide your OSPF routes, which is around 7,000 routes, by the full internet table, which is around 300,000, the percentage that you come up with is about 2%. So the number of OSPF routes compared to the number of internet BGP routes in a service provider network is around 2%. And, and that's a worst case scenario. So it could be lower than that. So 2% is basically, a, it's a very small number. But if that 2% is not managed properly, if that 2% is not fine-tuned, then it can impact your whole network. So we will talk about what you can do about that 2% in a service provider network to improve performance. So what if I tell you that we can reduce the size of your OSPF table to literally the number of routers that you have in your network. If you can do that, that's going to bring very fast convergence. It's going to improve the performance because the less number of routes that you have in your routing table, your performance becomes better. That's the whole idea. Reduce the number of routes in your OSPF table. So where can you optimize? Well, we're about to cover that. In addition, the solutions offered will also lower, if not eliminate, any route flapping you may have on your network. Let's see how to optimize that critical 2%. So the first area of concentration is going to be the link between the PE and CE routers. Now, this is not talking about an MPLS environment. We are talking about the provider providing the connectivity to the customer and learning routes from the customer. And it's, this is not from an MPLS perspective, but just from the service provider and customer perspective. That link that you are seeing in red between the PE and the CE routers these links, you need to carry these links in your OSPF. And why is that? Because you need a route to the next hop. When you carry a BGP route and you're inside your network, the next hop for OSPF will have to be unchanged. IBGP, when it advertises the route inside your network, should not change the next hop. So if it doesn't change the next hop, then that means that any router who needs reachability to that customer will need a route to the next hop. 